Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As you may follow me on my channel, since I reviewed the original Space Jam last week, I mean, I can go on for hours talking about that movie. I just have fun, you know, it puts me a smile out of my face and just laugh as hard, mostly for the wacky, ingenious, uh, slapstick, humor, or gags, and all of that put in mind. But I'll take it so too seriously. Uh, I gave it four and a half stars, almost closer to five, because while I do love the movie, I do admit maybe they could have stretched a little more of the story development. Like maybe they could have been a little bit more on, on Michael Jordan and the Looney Tune game and other stuff. That would be perfect. Like that would have been a lot of bounding with each other. I mean, there's there's a little bit, but I just feel like they could have been a little more to stretch out uh, over the 90 minute mark. Um, next, I wish Bill Murray had a little more screen time because uh, I do like to see more of him actually, you know, playing the game with uh, the rest of the Looney Tunes and all, and maybe focus on all the. Uh, <laughs> all the actual uh, you know, fundamentals and, and all you know, of all the plays that they have to do yeah, everything and it's always cool to actually see you know all your favorite characters you know while throwing in all, all their gags you know they just going around just having fun you know beating against uh, the aliens who wanted to enslave them for their theme park you know joining them with uh, Mr. Spockhammer Swear him, you know. I mean, that was the purpose of the story. Was that yes, it's focusing on an intergalactic uh, alien group to to actually, you know, desperate enough to find the Looney Tune game so they could save it. But they're probably going to end up, you know, doing something completely evil, especially even in the last quarter where they actually signed a deal. If they work with Michael Jordan, then he's going to be slaving him in a way yeah <laughs> um, but most of all I wish um, I know I'm going to say this I wish Lola Bunny had a little more screen time too because let's face it she's not only tough skilled athletic but she's definitely stunningly hot <laughs> Yeah, and now I know why Bugs Bunny just incredibly loves her so much. Yeah, love interest too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't blame him. I mean, she's probably the hot. She's definitely the hottest thing since uh, Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Plus, I I love the special effects they use. The animation is stunning at the time. And it also shows that you can actually take him without animating him. And it also shows you can actually take uh, Michael Jordan without animating him. So he can pretty much play himself in human flesh. That's what I love about that, too. And yeah, he can, and in their world, they can do anything. <laughs> and of course, I, I love all the slapstick wacky, goofy um, humor with puns and all. That's part of the charm. It always puts a smile on my face and I just can't help but laugh. You know, and having a great time, especially when I saw this in theaters back in 1996. Yeah, which, which, which was a great year at the time. There were a lot of great movies that come out that year too. But all the blockbusters like Independence Day, Mission Impossible, um, Dragon Hearts, The Phantom, uh, and as well as uh, uh, Chain Reaction and all the rest. Plus, you get some more holiday films to show up, uh, like 101 Dalmatians, and and even the. <laughs> Movies like Avita, 
the preacher's wife, and, and other favorites to come out. But hey, it's perfect. Anyway, uh, now I'm going to be reviewing the sequel. Um, I'm going to put on hold for Looney Tunes Back in Action, though, because I definitely want to review that. I can't wait. So I want to review the brand new movie that I saw on HBO Max. The long-awaited sequel that we didn't expect it or even want. Space Jam New Legacy. Yeah. Which this time LeBron James takes over instead of Michael Jordan. Where he now uh, brings his son to uh, the Warner Brothers Studios where they meet this computer AI who's the villain of the story named Algy Rhythm. Yeah, Algorithm. <laughs> yeah, at least now I can pronounce it better. better uh, and he's played by Don Cheeto, as you may remember him from films like, uh, like Hotel Wanda, the Iron Man sequels, where he played War Machine. And he's done a lot of uh, incredible work, and I love this actor. I mean, I always remember the actor ever since I saw him in uh, in an episode of The Prince Prince of Bel Air, and all these other stuff that he's been doing. And that's why you know he's still uh, working today. But anyway, uh, this time, yes. Um, he wants up uh, getting trapped into the Looney Tunes world, and that's where he begins to grab all the Looney Tune characters to work together as a team. So they now have the, the Tune Squad, just like in the original film. And now he has to play one on one with his son, and since he actually created a computer game for the internet called you know, Dom Game. A basketball team where where it's inside under the dome where you get all these uh, familiar movies TV shows and other stuff from Warner Brothers intellectual properties yeah. all serving at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank California so now you'll be able to see all your favorite characters it kind of plays almost like Ready Player One mix in with uh, the original Space Jam. Now I went in there with some mixed expectations. Well for one thing, I love Ready Player One. That was an excellent movie based on a book that's best selling. And I do have the book by the way too. It's it's great. Plus I love the Looney Tune characters to join in and I went in just for that as opposed to all the other stuff that we got and the visual effects and Don Cheeto and all but I sure didn't win in mostly for LeBron James because that's the problem I'm not a big fan of him I mean I know he's in the Lakers but I could have settled for a much better basketball player that's very likable highly skilled very successful and definitely cares more for the Looney Tune characters and all like Michael Jordan did in the original because you know he was very popular back then and the fact that the story was based on the Nike commercials that Joe Pika directed you know with the help in hand with Ivan Reitman's production team yeah and it shows that they actually had a lot of heart and soul put into this project. And I don't give a crap about what critics say these days, especially Doug Walker, who's not exactly a critic, he's just a performer <laughs> playing the nostalgic critic. And yes, his review stinks. Don't bother with what he thinks, he's just doing the same shit tick like he always does, plus putting out some boring. SNL like skits just so it could be funny when it's not. And sad to say, you know, I learned that the hard way. But 
hey, you know, we all make mistakes. But look what the but look what's going on with the internet nowadays in this generation. Everybody's just following the same old cancel culture, woke generation, SJWs, and all that stuff that were happening, and it's really starting to go way too far. And I hate it. And it needs to stop. I, I hate the fact that even when I'm hearing about this, they have to cancel Pepe Le Pou, the character. Because he's not featured in this new movie, and that really bothers me so much. But luckily he got to be in the first movie, so that's okay. But you know, they were also going to cancel Speedy Gonzalez. And guess what? They got him in the movie. So, thank goodness for that. And then, there's a lot of um, controversial scandals involving Lola Bunny, which I meant to say this when I did my review, was they actually have complained about um, how they gave her more of a, her, a flat chest, you know, instead of, you know, growing some boobs. I mean, and the fact that they, the way they dressed her in the film. I mean, I know, because I guess they wanted to, uh, they, they wanted to uh, down-level the, the sexuality of that character. It's totally un unnecessary and unfair. I, I understand she's not supposed to be sexualized, but that's just what everyone had felt when, when we had a crush on someone that we love. I mean, that's almost like, you know, desexualizing Jessica Rabbit. I mean, that, it's not fair, man. All because of woman's lib or any other. Which, that needs to stop, too. Unless, you know, they respect what we all are, and they should start respecting genders. Both male, female, trans and all and other um, racial stereotypes that we have I mean come on this is ridiculous I mean even for a harmless uh, family film and it is harmless at, at times but I think they really do need to have more jokes and maybe better jokes sometimes and maybe they really need to start you know lighting things up but that's not the case here I'm, I'm going to show you that when I went to McDonald's uh, yesterday, <laughs> I got a Happy Meal toy of Daffy Duck from the movie. <laughs> so, there's still more toys at McDonald's, so if you want to get some more you know, Looney Tune toys from the movie, then go right ahead. Yeah. But hey, you know, I've been a fan of Looney Tunes for a long time, the same way I'm a fan of of the Peanuts game and all the others that I love. So. But I'll, I'll get right to this review and see what I think about it. Alright, so here we go. The movie stars LeBron James, Stephen uh, Cannoli, Don Cheeto, Cedric Joe, Sonequa Martin Green, Chris Davis, um, Sire J. White, Harper Lee Alexander, along with Ernie Johnson Jr. and Lil Y. Powery, who of course you may remember him in the movie Get Out. Uh, he's very funny. Other cameos like Sarah Silverman and Steven Yoon, uh, along with uh, Sue Bird, Draven Green, Aljo Wilson, Wood Harris. And featuring the voice acting of of all the Looney Tune characters or any other two to, to follow, uh, like Jeff Bergman, um, Eric Baza, Sandeya, you may remember her from that Disney Channel show, and I know she was in the the Spider-Man movies, you know, Homecoming and Far From Home. Uh, Bob Bergen, Candy Milo. Gabriel Iglesias, yes, the, the stand-up comedian, but he was also a former cast member of All That. Yeah, and he's always best known for doing his uh, his shtick called, uh, like, I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Fred uh, Tata Scalore, Jim Cummings, uh, Paul Julian, Anthony Davis, Damian Lillard, Kay Thompson, Danica Amamak, um, Diane uh, Tarasi, Rosario Dawson, yes, great actress, and uh, Justin Rowland. Yeah, based on the original Space Jam, which is also based on the Looney Tunes. Uh, it's written by Joel Taylor, Tony uh, Redenmauer, Keenan Cougar, Terrence Nance, Jesse Gordon, and Celeste Ballard. And, of course, it's being produced by you know, Ryan Coogler, along with LeBron James. Yeah, he's producing this. Maverick Carter and Duncan Henderson. And it's directed by Malcolm D. Lee, who, of course, has done a lot of great, great movies, or not-so-great movies. Like, yes, he did do films like The Best Man, Undercover Brother, uh, World Bounce, uh, Welcome Home, Russell James, The Soul Man, but he also directed that terrible, horrible sequel to this, in the Scary Movie franchise, uh, Scary Movie 5, yeah, with no laughs whatsoever. But he did, have, however, uh, directed movies like Barbershop, The Next Cut. Uh, I do have that on Blu-ray. I do need to get all the Barbershop movies. Uh, Girls Trip and that terrible, unfunny comedy, Night School, with uh, Kevin Hart. The movie begins when we meet basketball champion LeBron James, who actually had a decent performance in the 2015 Judd Apatow comedy Trainwreck, which was hilarious. I forgot to mention that, but that wasn't the case here. Well... We have an opening that's quite the opposite of the original Space Jam, where we meet a young Michael Jordan following his dreams to become a highly skilled, successful basketball player for the NBA, joining the Chicago Bulls team, winning a lot of games, championships, you know, after earning some scholarships from college. And he made a promise that he couldn't keep that he made a promise that he could keep from his father, you know, where he can actually play professional baseball as an early retirement, you know, since he was playing basketball at a young age with his father at night. I mean, that was, that was a wonderful, miraculously touching moment right there. But the way you saw it in this movie, it opens drastically melodramatic and completely sour. Where we meet a young LeBron James back in 1998 as a kid who was trying to follow his mother's advice as well as the coach who became totally hostile, especially when he's not even paying attention to everything he's supposed to be doing, especially playing basketball. Uh, with his uh, entire team, but they lost the game. I mean, he got too distracted with this video game of Looney Tunes that was on Game Boy. And then everything just went sour throughout his childhood. And then it had to open exactly alike, where we get to see the past, present, and future of James's professional basketball career. It just seems kind of phony when you have to play some generic rap music to go with it. Oh boy. And if that wasn't enough, here comes the, the wonderfully adequate story where James had wishes for both of his sons, Darius and Dom, to follow in his footsteps, hoping to not make that mistake, or if, if that's the case. Darius, unfortunately, might be the one, but he'll end up becoming completely goofy, especially when he's getting knocked out by all these basketballs. Dom, on the other hand, is a child prodigy in computer software, 
which instead streams of becoming a video game developer. Uh, his wife, uh, Kamaya, advised him to respect his wishes, so that way, you know, he'll finally follow the dream here, and that way it doesn't end up in a family conflict, which that's the case that it happened. It was when he finally shows some interest in Dom's game, he discovers a glitch in his character when he was trying to come up with a special, specific move. It caused the entire game that was, it was a prototype, and it crashes the entire computer and all. So now he has to figure out how to you know, fix it. Later on, LeBron is invited with his family to the Warner Butter Studio lot in Burbank, California. Yeah, it's an excellent place. And I know I've seen the place many times. <laughs> but he was about to discuss a movie deal. Maybe for his audio biopic or any other. Yeah, you can even meet uh, uh, Sarah Silverman making a cameo appearance as one of the executives or so. But he totally dismissed the idea. While Dom shows interest in the studio software, which is particularly the main villain of the story, a state-of-the-art AI name based on algorithm, you know, a name that I had trouble pronouncing, Algy Rhythm, who's played by Don Cheeto. Dom expresses interest in a future with Warner Brothers leading up to a blow-up argument between James and him, and he actually refused to let him play and he refused to let him give up basketball to join. So Al G has secretly become self-aware and desires more recognition from the world, whereas the two in a basement server room and traps them in a virtual reality, which is like the Oasis in Ready Player One. Which now he takes Dom as his prisoner while he sends uh, James directly into you're going to love this, the Looney Tunes world, all the way straight down, where now everything is all in 2D animation, vividly beautiful, exactly what the Looney Tune cartoons were, like it looked like it would have been done by animators, like almost like Chris Freeling, or even Bob Clampett, or, or maybe in some cases like Chuck Jones in a way, but but more different. But it just looks beautiful. But unfortunately, Bugs Bunny is all alone. And now he's up to the challenge to, to team up with James to actually find the rest of the Looney Tunes characters because they explained that LG were the ones who actually split them across. So now, this is what leads to, you know, Warner Brothers' intellectual properties, where we get to see all these movies, as well as television, sports, and other stuff, by having to, even when using the spaceship that belongs to Marvin the Martian, <laughs> LeBron, James and Buzz had traveled to different worlds based on the properties themselves, where it, you see DC Comics, Harry Potter, uh, the classic Casablanca, The Matrix, and even Games of Thrones. And yes, and don't forget Austin Powers. Yeah, baby! <laughs> That's totally shagadelic. Okay, I get the idea. Um, yeah, which actually throw in a lot of those uh, wonderful parodies, you know, especially when you saw Granny and... <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez uh, acting like he was, they were uh, Trinity and uh, Neo in a way, and you know, trying to kill all these bad guys and, and all, and stop it. Uh, there's even a scene in uh, the, there's even a parody of Mad Max Fury Road, you know, where you have Wally Coyote, you know, chasing the Road Runner. I thought that was pretty funny. I'll be honest with that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's really crazy to have been to see all these parodies, uh, you know, where Daffy Duck uh, dresses up as Superman and, 
and both uh, <laughs> LeBron's and and Bugs were dressed up as Batman and and one Robin. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And of course, it also leads to Wonder Woman, and the, that's where they finally got Lola Bunny, who's voiced by Sadea. Yeah, instead of um, Calf uh, Susie. So she'll become the next uh, Amazonian. <laughs> so all the gang has gone together to team up so that way LeBron James is ready to save his son who's basically being kidnapped by Al G. Whereas at this rate, Dom is ready to uh, be able to create a father and son battle um, all the way down to the dome. And where they're going to bring all these characters that you're so familiar with, which leads to a big distraction. Yeah, you, you begin to see characters like like the Flintstones, the Jetsons, Thundercats, uh, the Warner Brothers and Warner Sister from <laughs> Animaniacs, I, and so on and so forth. And there's even uh, char movie characters, even villains too. To join in from all the other Warner Brothers uh, movies and New Line and MGM and all. Like you have The Mask, you have Beetlejuice, you have It with um, Pennywise the Clown, you have the current one, not the old one with with Tim Curry, and you got all this. You even got Mr. Freeze, which was played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It said this is sort of a different actor to play the part, almost like they're cosplaying in a way. So yes, they're headed one on one, and he Dom actually created the Goon Squad from LG. So they had to hire some other players, mostly from both NBA and WNBA. Yeah. Well, LeBron James was starting to come up with some fundamentals to see if they can get all the game together to become, as we speak, the the Toon Squad, which I know that's what Bugs Bunny had in mind as they remembered. Yeah. Of course they were gonna have Daffy Duck to become the coach this time. Yeah, and that didn't work out because they keep treating him like shit. <laughs> um they keep treating him like dirt. Okay, well with that aside, uh when they finally got to the game, you know, things were not going so well, like, yeah, you know that they're gonna start, you know, getting attacked you know, they're going to start uh, disassembling them. And they're just going to bring them down. They're going to earn more points than they are. And then they knew they forgot something. So at that point on, in order to bring a lot of help, was that they were going to bring in... Well, you're going to love this. Sylvester was going to bring in <laughs> Michael Jordan. But it turned out to be, you're going to love this, Michael B. Jordan, the actor. <laughs> oh boy. So of course, with the Looney Tune gang, you know, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Sylvester Tweedy, Grandy, Lola, Speedy Gonzalez, no Pepe Le Pew, can you believe that? But half of them are gonna continue to, to go Looney to to beat the Goon Squad since they got their own team and they're really tough. You know, they had like for example they had to have Porky Pig perform as a rapper with the mic drop and all and then they had to go for some more hilarious uh, wacky humor slapstick gags that's almost similar to the original but some work some don't and then they're earning more points and then, James was about to try to go back to his son and try to make up for all the mistakes he made. And yes, they're trying to go for heartfelt moments. But Al G eventually found out about this. And now, this is where Don was ready to quit. Well, Al G is basically using a quote from the movie Training Day. You know, the movie that uh, made... Uh, <laughs> Um, Denzel Washington won his um, second Oscar for his performance. Yeah. 
King Kong has got nothing on me. <laughs> and then you see King Kong in the background. Yeah, well, you got a lot of characters. So, of course, they had to come up with the specific move that, as he remembered, coming from his game, was they were going to have Bugs Bunny. Well, first it was going to be LeBron James doing the glitch, but it turns out that it would be Bugs. And they weren't so sure how that's going to turn out, but this would actually stop the game completely, and then, which then will lead to a big tragic moment, is that they're all going to be deleted from the server. Well, they had the wish chance to take, so that's when um, Bugs decided to team up. You know, he performs the glitch, and then passed the ball to LeBron's, and suddenly he begins to make the shots while being carried by Al G. And yes, we learned that he's now becoming the basketball player to take over from Dom. And then, by the time he makes the shot, he becomes the poster. So it's him, and now he's toast. They won the game. And now everybody have went back to their own world. Well, Bugs unfortunately was sort of dying you know, with a glitch and all, and now they're about to go back to their world until we find out what happens next. Was that once uh, Dom finally uh, did try something new by actually trying to become the new developer and you know, by going to a computer class, he's also going to keep the basketball. Um, so now. James had finally uh, learned his lesson and decided to, to do exactly what his dream wants so that way it won't be you know, a problem. But of course Bugs Bunny came back and then we realized that his entire team had came back to you know just to spend time with James and now just go <laughs> explore the entire world and that led to the end credits. You can never go wrong with Looney Tunes, you know, with Bugs Bunny going from his uh, <laughs> famous lines, you know, eh, What's up, Doc? Or having Daffy Duck saying, um, You're despicable! Or <laughs> Tweety saying, I thought I taught a putty cat! I did! I did taught a putty cat! So Besser going with the line, Cephalane Succotash! And Porky Pit always does. Immediately bleep bleep. That's all, folks. And of course, Speedy always going. Yeehaw! Underlay, 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 yeehaw! And <laughs> well, you get the idea. Okay. I don't hate it or love it either. It's pretty much a meddling mess. But I'll say this. It's worth watching mostly for the Looney Tune game and all the WB uh, IPs with all the cultural references and the visual effects is incredibly stunningly visually breathtaking and beautiful all done by IOM you know, Industrial Light and Magic which I know they worked on it since Who Framed Roger Rabbit when they created all the special effects and the characters and all. But the story doesn't work, and that's the problem. It just feels totally forced, phony, and I just don't believe LeBron James one second. And he's the main reason why the film pretty much crashed and burned. Uh, however, Don Cheeto would definitely be the best villain throughout the entire movie. He stole the show. I mean, I guess you could feel some sympathy of him, too, which that's true. But I know this is the kind of guy who's just going to go off his whiff, and he's just going to be over the top, just have a lot of fun knowing how, how this one-trick manipulating pony here is going to take no answers, no probably take more prisoners than ever to do exactly what you want. Like he's starting to become like the next fodder figure. 
But I know it's cliche, but compared to this uh, adequate story, I mean that's the case here. But it was fun to see the Looney Tune gain again, both 2D and 3D. Yeah, you get to see all of them, particularly realistically furry and all. I mean, now you see Lola Bunny, flat chest. Now you basically see all the other characters uh, wearing different uniforms instead of the, the original. And I do admit it does look impressive, but they just could have done so much better with the story arc here. And maybe it did need some more, um, which was sorely lacking, was the quirky and self referential humor that the original film had. And I know that's, and of course I know there's a lot of product placement, I know there's a lot of distractions with all the characters, all your familiar stars, that I guarantee you, you have to pause, It's because it's one of those blank you'll miss it, or you have to slow it down. I mean, especially if you have to watch this on HBO Max, <laughs> for the case. Uh, so far, it's gross uh, at 54 million worldwide, but I think it's going to get there out of its 150 budget so far. I know they weren't really expecting to have a sequel, even though originally they were going to start having spin-offs before they went on to do Looney Tunes Back in Action instead. Like they were going to spin off with other sports stars too, like for example Tony Hawk. Tiger Woods and um, any other um, star around. I mean, but that never happened because I guess Warner Brothers was going through different ideas and they had to change uh, directions, executives, and all. I actually didn't mind the uh, the game announcers. I, I know in the original film they had the two mice. Got forgot to mention that. Uh, they had Ernie Johnson Jr. and Lil uh, Y. Howery, yeah, from <laughs> Get Out. I mean, he's he's very funny. Um, the fact that he had to get the cameo by Michael B. Jordan and all. Um, and there are some jokes that work, but then there are other ones that don't. I, I know. Considering it's running time, yes, it's very long, almost nearly two hours, I mean, compared to the original film, it's running time. I just feel like, you know, maybe they could have done, if, if they only had gotten a better professional basketball player who definitely understands the Looney Tunes better, and we begin to see his caricature more, you know, believable, then I think we could have had a better film here. Because that's not how I see LeBron James in his performance. I mean, his he, he just has this unlikable position, not, doesn't make a great league at all, and I really couldn't see that. I, I really don't buy this story at all. That's the, one of the problems. Yes, it does have a lot of merchandising going around too, just like the first one. I know I keep saying it. <laughs> But yes, uh, they're selling a lot of products uh, besides McDonald's. I mean, we're getting ones for General Mills, Heinz, um, GameStop, Mattel, Spalding, Hallmark Cards, Funko, and Hasbro. So, and I, I think even Nike is doing some too. And even they, they spawned off some spin offs too uh, earlier with the Teen Titan. Go uh, game to earlier. Uh, so, and hopefully, if you get all the toys at McDonald's, I mean, as long as you can, I mean, yeah, you'll be able to have all the rest of the Looney Tune game. And yes, even LeBron's. I, I understand that uh, not many people like LeBron's James, and that's fine. I'm not big on him, but I don't hate him. I know this is going to sound pretty emotional too, but uh, I know originally they were going to get basketball legend Kobe Bryant to actually direct the movie 
and actually make a cameo appearance, but I think it would have been better if he was the star of the film, because he would have understand better, plus it would have a much better story, this time with his daughter. But sadly, uh, they were killed uh, last year, you know, before the pandemic, or right in between, um, because of a helicopter accident. And they killed uh, half of the other people too over there, and and that sucks. It, I mean, it really hurts me so bad. Because he was another awesome player for the LA Lakers, joining in with Shaquille O'Neal. Boy, do I miss him. I mean, they could have thought of, of finding a better basketball player than LeBron James, but whatever. That's just the problem with this generation. You know, we can't have anything. Oh, and did I mention the soundtrack was really horrid? Yeah, nothing but generic auto-tune rap songs that are doesn't even hold a candle to the original Space Jam soundtrack. Once again, because I keep comparing it, um, think of all the memorable songs you have that the cover version of Fly Like an Eagle by Seal, For You I Will by Monica, The Monstars theme by the rest of the rap group, including LA, Cool J, Julio, and Redman, as well as um, I Turn to You by All for One, uh, a boy group, and even the Space Jam theme that was jamming, living, and kicking by the Quad City DJs. Those rap songs, they just can't duplicate. They're terrible. They're not memorable at all. And you know what's even worse? They played a Jonas Brothers song too uh, in the mix. Although they did actually have a song by Salt and Pepper, but that didn't work. <sighs> Boy, see, now I knew I was in trouble. Then I also learned that Malcolm D. Lee is not the original director for the film, too. I mean, I know they were going to get other directors to do so. In fact, uh, Terrence Nance uh, directed the first half of the movie before he left, and Malcolm D. Lee took over for the rest. So I guess that means that maybe there's something cooking going around at Warner Brothers. Yeah. And all this other crap going on around. But let me tell you this. Um, if you love the original Space Jam. And you love Looney Tunes. And, and even Ready Player One. It's fine. Um, it's worth watching just for that. But if you don't love LeBron James. Don't bother. But hey that's fine. Okay, Love it or hate it. That's cool with me. You know because I concur. However, I'm just going to give the film a meddling, Nick, a meddling review, you know. Some things I love, others I don't, in that sort of way. But I think it's still going to be, well, at least for that matter, won't be as good as the original Space Jam, which is way better, and following the truly underrated Looney Tunes back in action. But much better is Ready Player One and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So you'd be better off sticking with those, in a way. But, hey, at least it's better than the most recent uh, Tom and Jerry live-action animated uh, hybrid that we had, which is to me, the worst movie of the year so far. This one, at least, I could watch. And I might watch this movie again. You know, who knows? Maybe I'll buy this on 4K <laughs> if I have to. Because, what could we do, you know, to kill time? <laughs> well, anyway. So that's Space Jam, A New Legacy, and I give the movie two and a half stars 
I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and let's Pokey Pig says, Elite, 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 that's all, folks.